good morning everybody it's a wonderful morning beautiful we are expecting some more rain which is really exciting we've been getting a lot more rain lately and the pastures have just been growing so so much better than all of last year which is super exciting it was a very tough year yesterday um, excuse me last year with the drought and everything but milking every day milk Bella again this morning getting our milk we've actually ordered a cream separator and a stand-up mixer just so that we can or countertop mixer I'm not sure what you call them just to be able to make butter and cream better I just wanted to give you an update on the pigs the three little pigs that we bought and here they are on the cattle steep bedding and look at how well they are digging This is where the cows have been going all of last winter and the pigs have been digging through this and this stuff is really warm it's starting to compost now so all the pigs have floor heating here and it's just turning into this really nice compost and you can feel the heat under here as a farmer you need a lot of patience you know you plan the planting then you see the seeds and then you nurture them and first in the fall you have the harvest it's kind of a similar thing here with the compost the cattle walk on this here in Sweden for six months and you just keep adding to it you keep investing into carbon material you keep investing into the corn that I spread throughout the steep bedding you feed the cattle daily and then in the spring you can finally put the pigs on here they're digging through this and turning this for you and there's different kinds of carbon material in here it's wood shavings it's wood chips it is straw it is bedding hay and you can really use any kind of carbon material for this this is turning into a really really nice compost so the pigs are having a blast mixing this and I, I love feeling this heat and just knowing that the pigs are doing all that work for me at the same time as I do not have to feed them because the corn is in here and they are looking for it now these pigs are a little bit too small I think to dig all the way down so I might have to scoop some off the top at some point but they grow they have already grown a bunch since I got them and they have a blast looking through it. Sometimes I just like to give the pigs a little start and then you can just see how they will continue to dig here. So they have dug about, I would say, 20 centimeters into this deep bedding at a lot of places. And as the food and those layers is all used up, they're gonna be digging deeper into this to find the other food. Here is a fermented corn, and it's pretty much just the skin, and the pigs love this stuff. They eat it rather than the dry corn, and that's what they're going for. Now the, the manure and this whole bedding is like a healthy compost pile, and they just love all the fermented stuff in it. Now as the pigs get stronger and bigger they will just be able to go deeper down into this and this is about a meter deep at the deepest place and there's a lot of material that's just gonna be turning into compost. Right now it is so hard to dig through this it's compact and solid on the bottom and they're just making it completely light and fluffy. Have a bunch of loose material and then you come into this compact hard ground where the cow's hooves have just pushed this together and you would really need heavy machinery in order to 
dig through this or a pig's nose. But here I'm finding my corn now. So this is what I would call happy pigs. Pig's noses are 2,000 times more sensitive than human noses. So they can find food at places that we couldn't possibly smell anything and they just smell it through the dirt into the ground. Now that also makes me think that you know they want to smell with the noses, they want to dig with the noses and putting pigs on concrete floors where they cannot do that. They, they cannot dig, simply impossible and where they have to smell their own manure all the time and if you know pigs you know that they are fairly clean animals and that they would never add their manure anywhere near where they're eating. They have a designated area for that where they go they would never poop into their house or nest they would never do anything like that and just the way that the industry keeps the pigs I think is so going against what the pig wants and it doesn't honor the pigness of the pig like Joel Salatin would say we, we force these pigs with the sensitive noses to breathe their own manure and force them to, to do things that are unnatural to them and this is just what they love doing and because this is fermented grass from the cows the pigs love it they just do So guys, before I wrap up this video, I just want to share two books with you. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. I read these earlier in the year. Uh, this is the first book. It's by Farmer and one of my, you know, big examples that I look up to, Joel Salatin from Polyface Farm in Virginia. Uh, we had the privilege of visiting him and he gave us a copy of his latest book. I've read a bunch of other books that he wrote and he has had he's one of the people who has had the biggest influence on my life and my farming methods and his latest book it's called The Marvelous Pigness of Pigs and I want to recommend this book to you it is a bit different than previous books from him he explains in the opening chapter why just as me Joel Salatin is a Bible believing Christian and his farming ethics and what drives him comes from his faith in God just like with me and this is a book that really challenges Christians. I just want to read to you guys what it says here on the back to understand a little bit better what this book is about. It says, Respected and successful Christian ecological farmer or family farmer, Joel Salatin, knows that every living organism has a God-given uniqueness to its life that must be honored and respected. And God intended for us to respect and care for his gift of creation, not to ravage and mistreat it, and when huge corporate farms confine pigs in cramped pens and check them with antibiotics and feed them herbicide saturated food simply to increase profits, they are not respecting them as a creation of God. Salatin shows us the long overlooked ethics and instructions in the Bible for how to eat, how to shop and how to think about how we farm and feed the world with warmth and with humor but with no less piercing criticism of the industrial food complex, Saladin brings readers on a fascinating journey of farming, food and faith. Readers will not say grace over their plates the same way ever again. So I really want to recommend this book, especially if you are a Christian, but even if you're not a Christian, there are a bunch of reviews from people who are not Christians who just respect him, and I hope that uh, you will find inspiration in this book. It, it has really spoken to me it has been one of the best reads in my close past and I'm really excited to share this with you so the marvelous pigments of pigs you can find it on Amazon just google it and I really highly recommend it now to the other book it is the book Optimus Fits written by Ben Corson you guys remember that Ben Corson was part of a video that I made about my in-laws going through cancer both of them were diagnosed with cancer last year and I made a video called Hope During Cancer and Ben Corson he's one of the greatest voices for hope and battling uh, you know hopelessness and depression I think in the entire world right now he's one of the greatest voices his ministry is called Hope Generation and he wrote this book called Optimus Fits and it was within the first 24 hours of its release I think it was the best number one bestseller in the genre Christian and in the genre depression so I can highly recommend this book even if you're not a Christian but you need hope you need new encouragement new passion to move on 
this is a great great read you will really enjoy it he has just an unique and super fun style of writing I highly recommend this book if you are like me then you are often not satisfied with how things always go and how things have always been done but you're kind of a little bit of a rebel inside of you and you want to try new things and test new things even if people say it can't be done or it's not worth it or what whatever and you know the I think the world and society want want to quench these kind of desires and passions within us and Ben Corson does an extraordinary job and going against that and just saying live out what you want to accomplish work hard on it and he struggled with chronic depression all throughout his 20s I believe and he has just been freed and he is he is such a source of, of joy and hope so I highly recommend this book to you both of the books are great and I will continue in the future to share good reads with you guys in all different kinds of genres and these two books I thought would be a great start. So thank you for watching guys, hope this helped you and you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.